Okay, and another word related to um, traveling in the car uh, or traffic is the word cut. This is from the Malay, potong, potong jalan. So we say, cut lah, cut lah, cut that lorry, you know, he's going so slow. So we don't say cut in, in standard English, we would say overtake, right? Not, not cut. Um, so that is an example of uh, how our first language uh, tends to interfere with our use of, of English. Um, let me see, another one is, you know, you, you, uh, when you want to uh, offer to give transport to somebody somewhere, uh, don't say, we'll send you to the airport. Sending somebody is usually, uh, usually means that you don't go along. So, for example, you might send somebody, uh, uh, send your daughter to school on the school bus. That means you don't go along, all right? Or you might um, uh, say you send a parcel. Definitely, you don't go along with the parcel, all right? So you can, when you say, so you don't say you send somebody to the airport if you mean you want to take them there. So you just say, let me take you to the airport, not send you to the airport, all right? Sometimes, you know, people like to uh, joke about this and say, you want to send me to the airport? Just put a stamp on my head. So we don't mean that kind of sending. Right? Um, okay, in a, a, a social situation, sometimes, you know, when we have a, a meal together, somebody might feel a bit generous and, and uh, would like to pay uh, for everybody's food. So you might, you might hear somebody say, ah, today I just struck lottery, I want to spend you all. Spend, that's again a transfer from Malay, belanja, right? So we, in Malay, we say, we want, I want to belanja you. But um, it, it's not standard English to say, I spend you. Let me give you a treat. Let me pay for your meal instead of spend, okay? Um, okay, let me just give you one more. This word is, is a rather formal word, undergo. It's quite a formal word, but people use it, uh, for example, to talk about taking a course. So I've heard people say, for example, I'm undergoing a course in economics or in accounting. Um, when they actually mean I'm taking a course in accounting. Now the word undergo, we don't use for um, when we want to talk about courses we're taking, simply because undergo is usually uh, used when you want to talk about uh, an unpleasant experience. You know, for example, uh, the doctor tells you, I'm afraid you have to undergo a series of uh, operations. Th that is something unpleasant. So you undergo that. But you take a course. You don't undergo a course unless it's very mis <laughs> a very miserable, unpleasant series of uh, uh, studies. Okay? So, um, well, that's not all. But I think that's good enough for a start. Uh, let me give you some other examples, though, that are uh, peculiar to Malaysian English but are not wrong, not considered wrong at all. For example, these are words that have been handed down uh, because of our colonial past. You know, we were under British administration before, so some of these words originated in that time and um, they're still considered legit, legitimate in use, although it's not found in other varieties of English. Okay, for example, the word compound. Compound to refer to the area in uh, around your house, around a building. So the school compound, for example. Okay. Um, usually, um, when we talk about like like in my house, I have a small compound. In British English, you would say I have a small garden. I have a little lawn in front of my house. But in Malaysian English, we tend to use the word compound, which is not wrong at all. Okay. Another meaning of the word compound is to pay a fine, uh, uh, the fine that you pay. Um, commonly uh, referred to in, by Malaysians as summon. Summon. It's not summon. You receive a summons. It's always with an S. Okay? So it's the same thing as a compound, but not the kind of compound that you have in your house, around your house. Okay? Um, leave. Uh, these two words, leave and quarters, these are words that have been commonly used uh, in the armed forces only, but somehow we have taken it on into our uh, daily use as well. For example, when you talk about somebody taking leave or on leave, that, is, uh, origin that, that, that use of the word leave originated from uh, armed forces actually. So you can say, um, Encik Suhaimi is on leave today, whereas in standard English you might say, he is away, he is on holiday. Okay. Uh, quarters, we talk about staff quarters, but in the UK, they would refer to it as staff accommodation. Okay. 
and outstation. Yeah, that's not wrong, you know. It is uh, acceptable. So it, it again, this this is the word, one of the words that have been handed down since the British administration here. So we say an outstation call when we mean a call from out of town, uh, or a, or an outstation taxi when it's a taxi that travels from out of town, or we say somebody's gone outstation when he's gone when he's left this town and gone to another town. Okay, so nothing wrong with this at all, except that you must remember this is quite peculiar to Malaysian English, and if somebody is not familiar with uh, um, with our uh, th these words, they might not understand what we say and they might ask you what is it.